Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, welcome to Campbellton, Cabin Hills, Campbellton. Um, so, me and I'm uh, pleased to welcome my guest here. Yes. Craig Lamont, he's from uh, Cabin Heads Edinburgh, my name is Lewis Anderson uh, and thank you all very much for joining us, spending your Saturday night with us, uh, it's our pleasure uh, to be able to take you through the latest Cabin Head release. Okay. Uh, so what we'll be doing tonight um, is taking you through last week's Cabin Head release which is a pretty exciting one. Um, this it seems like a perfect way to do a tasting, like having all these having all these different whiskeys, such an eclectic kind of range of different distilleries, uh-huh. different cast types, uh, and being able to try them all side by side just uh-huh. seemed like a perfect way to do it. So we thought, why not do a tasting? Um, and we we're pleased that Craig could uh, Craig could make it down to Campbellton to join us. Otherwise, it would have been quite a faff trying to set up Zoom uh-huh. and Cadenheads uh-huh. in Edinburgh at the same time. Things worked out, didn't they? It all yeah. worked out. Aye. It was quite good. Aye, they worked out. Um, so a lot of you might be familiar with uh, Craig and Edinburgh and myself here in Campbellton. Uh, you might have bought the packs from Edinburgh, from Campbellton or from the online shop. Um, but yeah, you're in for a treat. Um, even if you're watching this back, um, it will be a great tasting. Okay. If, you're, um, if you're new to Caddenheads, um, I'll give you a brief history. Yes. Um, so Caddenheads is Scotland's oldest independent bottler. And if you're not entirely sure what that is, uh, independent bottling is when we we buy casks of whiskey um, that are distilled in distilleries around Scotland and around the world, um, and then we age them ourselves, finish them ourselves, and then bottle them in the most natural state. Um, so Caddenheads was founded in 1842 by George Duncan, uh, and that was in Aberdeen. And then passed down the generations, the name eventually changing to Caddenheads when he, William Caddenhead, took over. Um, and passed down the generations uh, until eventually it was bought over by J. A. Mitchell uh, in 1972. And mm-hmm. since then, uh, we've been working from Campbelltown, um, opening the shop in Edinburgh first. Yeah, yeah, the oldest Caddenheads uh, oldest, shop. Yeah, uh, yeah, oldest yeah, Caddenheads shop. Um, and then building it from there, trying to make Caddenheads uh, once again a household whiskey name. Uh, which I think uh, I think it's getting to that stage now. Aye, aye. So, yeah, as Craig says, you've got the, the first Caddenhead shop, which was Edinburgh, then Campbelltown. And the best, and the best. And the best. <laughs> I, knew, I knew that was going to come. I knew that was going to come. Well, we're, the, we're the biggest. Ah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you now have nine Caddenhead shops. Uh, so you have Campbelltown, Edinburgh, London, um, Baden, Cologne, Odense, Berlin, what one am I missing? Vienna. Milan. Milan. There we go. Well, Milan. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, that's an introduction to Garden Heads and to me and Craig. Um, you get anything to say for yourself to start off, Craig? Yeah, you kind of ran through that quite well. Uh, I didn't get a peep. It was mean. fine. Um, Do you want a peep? <laughs> no, I'm fine. <laughs> sure. <laughs> well, you know, I just want to say a bit of what the older uh, regulars that, can, uh, that are probably watching this, hopefully, uh, the usual regulars at the Edinburgh shop. Um, not saying about everybody else. Nah, no, nah, <laughs> nah. <laughs> <laughs> nah, well, hopefully, hopefully you can uh, we can chat as well and um, get to know get to know each other and maybe buy buy from us as well. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not try to steal Definitely. customers. But, uh, <laughs> um, and if you've got any any questions or any comments, guys, uh, just leave it in the comment section and we'll see it here. Um, whenever I get the chance to keep the light, keep the light. Keep it polite. Uh, keep, uh, keep it polite. It's yeah. Saturday night. <laughs> it's Saturday night, but we're not going to go crazy. Yeah. Uh, I don't think. Well, maybe. Um, and a brief mention about the football last oh, week, just in case. Yes, yes. Just in case. Your typical throat, Scotland. Your fashion. throat's summed enough for course there. Yeah, yeah, it's a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little bit sore today, but typical Scotland fashion. Oh, no. we get to go out and celebrate. A nil, tell you, right? you know, celebrating the nil nil. That was brilliant, wasn't it? it was. <laughs> it was else. Uh, but this is a real celebration as well. Oh, yeah, this is good. Yeah. Been able to go through and taste all of these whiskies, all Scotch whiskies, bar uh, the one Indian whiskey. Yes, um, exactly. So yeah, yeah, this is our celebration of last night's draw. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, so without further ado, uh, we will go on to the first dram. So you can join me in pouring this one. And what's the first dram? Uh, the first dram is <laughs> uh, the first dram is a knock do ten year old. Sure. Um, this is um, a single cask, as everything will be in uh, in this tasting. Uh, bottled at forty nine point seven percent 
and it's been matured in bourbon until 2019. We can presume bourbon at least, um, and then finished in fino sherry um, from 2019 until until now. So yeah, first round. Cheers, folks. Thank Slangy. you again for joining us. Oh, it's lovely. I'm really looking forward to this one yeah. because I was a big fan of the previous release, the Royal, Bar- the Royal Brackley. Uh, the Fino, yeah, well. that one. was very good yeah. as well. Um, um, yeah, that's the, first, this one, yeah. that's the first time I've had much experience with Caddenheads and Fino, or any experience, yeah. I think, with Caddenheads and Fino. Because um, it's been a fairly new, um, a fairly new kind of venture. It's always been predominantly um, all Rosso or Bourbon. Oh. Whenever it was Sherry Milk. Well, we kind of thought we assumed it was all Russell. Um, but in recent years, uh, there has been a lot of development in, in buying more different casks and experimenting with different things. And well, you can see it in this release, basically what's been happening um, with just about a different cask type. Um, yeah, yeah. Every single bottle in here. And it's been very reactive, especially in that last one as well, and, and in this one, really. Um, quite nice. Mm-hmm. But overly dry as well, because that's what they say about. Um, you know, cast, isn't it? It's mm-hmm. can be quite dry. So. Yeah, it tends to be the the drier of the sherry. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it's not too much. Um, two years was plenty for it. It just gives it a nice kind of kick. Um, and actually, this is the first knock do. If you do, I've never heard of knock do distillery um, as well. Just in case it is, if you see it on the shop shelves, it will be bottled under Anok. Um, I think that was done to avoid confusion. With the distillery knock and do, you can see why that would get confusing. Yes, <laughs> um, but it's Caddenheads, so we'll always the name of the distillery is knock do, so we'll call it knock do. Yeah, 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 that's it. Um, so yeah, yeah, it's very fresh, it's just a, a nice, like, kind of light starter. I think this was Cameron's favorite. Uh, it's, remember, it's, right? You know what, it, it comes through a very like I said this about I, I keep on going back to the other one, but it's the only comparable one really at the moment. Um, the Royal Brackler. Um but it comes through very confectionery notes like mm. um ice cream and that sort of thing. Uh, yeah, it's definitely. It's so uh, that, and I've got a sweet tooth for, so that goes down mm. well with me. So it's brilliant. Do you know what? <laughs> 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 um but yeah, definitely a great one to start off on, I would say. Uh, it's a really nice strength as well, forty nine point seven percent. Ah, it's, it's not, quite quite low. Like yeah, for ten years old uh-huh. it listen quite low. And obviously, as everyone everyone knows, the longer a whiskey's been in the cask, the more uh, the more the alcohol strength will drop. So for ten years old, um, for this being distilled, you guess around kind of mid sixties, when you'd assume so. Yeah. To drop that far is fairly unusual, um, but yeah, it sits. It's a really nice, really nice strength. I would certainly recommend adding a little water to it, uh, which I'm going to do now. You adding it that way. Yeah. Oh, you've done this before, haven't you? I haven't did, uh, yeah. It's only because I forgot to put water on. <laughs> <laughs> very uh, prepared, guys. We're very, very prepared here. I don't know what's happening. You thought about that everything before that. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, you quite enjoy that one. Ah, yeah. fantastic, yeah. actually. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, can, I, I can see what maybe... I'm not too sure what Cam, uh, Cameron was maybe doing with this one. He was playing about with it. Um, but I would imagine if it was quite a low ABV, maybe wanted to give it a bit more oomph as well. Mm. Being it. Yeah, no. yeah, an extra kick. So there's been uh, plenty. There's been plenty of knock do's uh, previously. Like I said, there's not never not certainly not uh, in my tenure. There's not been an authentic one. No, there's not. It's been the what, the nine year old and eleven year old small batches. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. nine nine and eleven. But overlooked as well. They're quite nice. Uh, yeah, not kind of lemon. Sure. Yeah, I remember when we were when I was working in Edinburgh. I think. It was oh, here we go. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> All these colours. <laughs> <laughs> the glory days. Um, I it was. It was the first knock do I tried, certainly. I think it was Josh who described it as gritty. Yes. But does he still do that? Uh, I don't know. Because <laughs> it's, it's still on the shelf. Uh, it's still on the shelf. Uh, and it's not a bad description. I don't know. Robert, might have, Robert might have took that out of his system, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can't describe it. Uh, no, no, we're not allowed to do Um But yeah, it was like a fairly, it was a good description. So I kind of knew what he got. Uh, it was that kind of flinty. Yeah, I think that's what he was getting at anyway. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that was just in the bourbon matured one. So it's obviously, it wasn't, um, there wasn't a lot of influence from the bourbon casks. It was just, uh, you imagine it would be it quite was, a lot yeah, of distance. You could definitely tell, especially with, you know, you shouldn't really tell from the colour straight away, but you could tell from the colour that there wasn't going to be much cask influence. A bit peely wally. A bit peely wally, like yeah. myself. <laughs> before the sun hit. Oh, so. before the sun got. Ah, oh, jeez. Oh. Um, 
But no, um, that's certainly a great one to start off on. Um, so, if you're if you're ready, Craig, yeah, um, I think we can move on to the next one. Yeah, go on to the next one. I think so. The Milton Duff. Let's get aboard. Yeah, after you. There's Gavin. Hello, Gavin. Gavin on no. Cut this now. <laughs> Jim, Jim, come on the oh, Craigie, Jim says. God. Yeah. See, they're representing for me. I'm cheering you on back uh, home. cheering me on back home. <laughs> but I, th- I think they'll be a wee bit rough as well uh, from last night. So. No doubt. No doubt uh, about it. Jim said, he, I was speaking to Jim the other day and he said he was done, done watching the game. So, aye. Yeah. Um, but aye, we're on to the Milton Duff here. Um, this one here is 13 years old. Um, what was the cast type again? This one was all or also, all or yeah. also sherry. That was it, yeah. Um, not as dark as some of the other Milton Duffs that we've done before with the other also, yeah. Um, there's been a few, yeah, uh, really dark ones. You know, you had the, obviously the, yeah, the firkins and, and such like that. Yeah. There was an old nine year old as well, yeah, yeah. Like I remember that one, yeah. yeah. That one, uh, that one was really good, actually. That was a fan favorite, yeah. This is actually. But it's, it's maybe nice to go in a different direction with it, with mm-hmm. this one, a little bit lighter, less like kind of you know folk love their sherry bones, as they say. You know, yeah. uh, <laughs> I'm going to get a slap in the wrist when I get back up there. But I uh, people do prefer, sometimes prefer that, but sometimes it's nice to kind of kind of find mm-hmm. a balance, find a meeting ground. And um, this one is definitely done. I mean, Milton Duffs that we've done in bourbon casks and such, they're usually quite gentle already, you know, so and uh, spice it up a little bit, give it a little bit of kick. Nothing wrong with that at all. Yeah, it's actually really light. Yeah. Um like straight away there's not like you can't smell a lot of the cask influence. It's a lot of kind of well as I said, it's there in the background you get the kind of it's yeah, you can smell it's sweet and quite rich. Yeah, yeah, definitely definitely but it's not like obvious. I would nothing like, aggressive on the palate but, like yeah, in terms of that, but it's uh, it's, it's a golden dram, very much. You know, that's 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 fifty four point four. That again, I like I like that percentage. So I like that. I mean, mm. that kind of fifty five mark. That's fine. Um, that wasn't a that wasn't a day for for you, Jim. That was <laughs> like. <laughs> um, but I, I I do like that sort of kind of level. Plus, you know, you you still got that kind of leeway to play around with water if you want. Um, I don't add too much water usually, but um, I do like to play around with it now and again. So. Um, yeah, 13 years old, again, not even that old either, you know, it's no. still quite a low ABV. Um, but yeah, there's, I know, there's not been, I mean, all, all the recent kind of Milton Duffs we've done, um, I've been around that kind of age point as well, 9, 10, 11, 12, aye. 13. Aye. Aye. And I mean, that's, they go down on an absolute treaty. So good. Um, even, was it a 13 year old? Bourbon casket with that, or was it a 12 year old? It was a 10 year old Bourbon Is it a 10 year old? That's it, yeah, yeah. Is, yeah, yeah, that, that, that was very one. good. You know, like um, again, some of these might get overlooked by you know the the glamour drums that are in part of these uh, mm-hmm. releases and such. So, you know, like even this one, you know, the the bull blower and such that we'll go into later. But um, you know, it's 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 good it's good for us to kind of be able to kind of try and sell these ones as well. Uh, oh, yeah. You know, it's it's very good because sometimes you don't actually have to sell something; it's already gone, maybe, or like, you know, mm-hmm. like, yeah, you don't need to sell it. Yeah, um, yeah. So these ones, it's really good to show your appreciation to the customer. Look, look this one's actually a really nice one. Give it a try, yeah. and then they appreciate it. And that's what this is about as well, doing the tasting. Yeah, this is uh, this is for like for trying distilleries like this that you wouldn't normally you would normally just go into a shop when you've got a, when there's other things there. It's a tough choice having these eight whiskies coming out at the same time because they're also also different and so yeah. unusual. And um, so that's yeah. Just been able to try them all side by side is probably. Uh, and, and getting eight drums, good value for money. Oh, yeah. oh great value for money. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's free for you. So. Uh, <laughs> didn't say that. I paid for it. Hmm? No. I paid for you. <laughs> Did you? No, um, but yeah, no, another crap of that, definitely. Aye, fantastic. Um, so yeah, like Craig said, these are the ones that kind of. No, they don't get overlooked so much, but we have to kind of we have to talk to people about these. But if they come to the shop in Campbelltown, or if we speak to you guys on the phone, um, and as I know, a lot of people kind of like to take take advice on as well because if we try them and we enjoy them, then no doubt, yeah, we'll, 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 we'll put that forward for you guys. Usually, when we try something, it's fresh in the memory as well, and you know, and that's um, it. Kind of goes in little kind of bits and pieces like that, and. Um, 
Because if you'll mm-hmm. say if we've came up with a test note on our head that maybe somebody's came in and asked for after we've just kind of maybe had that described in our head after trying something, um, then it's pretty fresh in the mind for us to just go and recommend that. So that's why you know, we, the Royal Brackle was a great example of that, and I'll keep coming back to that one. <laughs> uh, that 12 year old from last. Yeah, it was good. The, uh, the nice thing about it is there was a lot. And of there it. was a lot of it, and and I think once people knew it was good, just just kept going out. And mm. we, I think we've got a couple of bottles left now, but. Um, yeah. not too, I'm not too sure. I've been off for a week as well. So. <laughs> yeah, we've both been <laughs> off for been a week. Off. <laughs> Great end to the week, though, isn't it? <clears throat> uh, yeah, it's good to get back to work. Eh? Uh, <laughs> no, it's great. It's um, great. We love but yeah, having been able to have these kind of ones in the shelves, I'm really looking forward to uh, getting back and actually seeing you notice the new packaging. If you've been drinking Cadenheads for a while, then you'll, you'll expect to see Sherry Matured whiskies in the, the Burgundy cartons and Wine Matured ones in the Red cartons. Um, but now that's changed, we'll have all the different cherry types uh, and wine types in these nice new cream boxes. So it's it's good having them on the shelf because normally this stuff, if there's the way it was, there would be a couple of sherry things in a release, maybe and uh, chances are they would sell out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even on the board, your board in Edinburgh. Oh, uh, the famous <laughs> board. Trying, uh, trying to hold on to something with the uh, you know, It's just up and down, honestly. It's, what, it's crazy. What's the, what's the board like again in Edinburgh? What do you mean? Like, just, uh, just oh, so yeah. So basically, when you when you walk into the Edinburgh shop, there's uh, on, uh, the lovely Royal Mile, uh, number one seven two Carnegie, by the way, and you just uh, you walk in, walk in the door, and you you look to the left, you'll see a grumpy old man usually, and then you look to the right, <laughs> you, you look to the right. <laughs> Uh, I'm not that old by the way, so it's not me. Uh, so <laughs> you look to the right and then you'll see this lovely big board folk, folk come near and far just to take pictures with it and all that. But it's a lovely just big blackboard with all the distilleries that we've kind of dealt with, even some of the um the kind of old distilleries that you'll not really see too much. Yeah, they're still on the board. Uh, still on the board. Totally yeah. defunct uh, they're yeah. still on there just <laughs> to, to show you that the VRIPs next to them and all that I, but uh, it's a great good concept right enough because it's like a big menu. Um, and it's good to be able to just show that to people as well. And um, we've got a very small shop in Edinburgh, so it's mm-hmm. it's, it's the difficult. perfect thing for it. Um, and I've, I've not really seen anything else like it before when I first started there. Just them explaining to me what the board was and how it worked and everything, and explaining to customers as they came into the shop. Um, I thought it was a great way to do things because you could just get every single distillery there. That's how I ended up. Memorizing all the distilleries and yeah, because you're looking at it all the time. Ah, yeah. you're looking at it all the time. Um, so if you've never been to the shop in Edinburgh, um, certainly recommend it. Um, it's obviously a lot easier to get to than Campbellton. Um, since Campbellton is not exactly somewhere you just pass by. No, no. Um, so if you're ever if you're ever in the vicinity, it's on the Royal Mile. Um, it's easy to miss as well. It is, you know, it's it's down um down towards near the, the Parliament, but you know you get that. Kind of higher end near the castle, which is usually where you'll you'll find most of your tourists go. Um, but I uh, even if you do walk, you you could you could quite easily walk past it as well. Mm. Um, I mean Edinburgh's a beautiful city, so your eyes are maybe taken elsewhere. Um, but mm. uh, a good way to to know where it is is you'll see the big Tolbooth uh, tavern. It's got the the clock above it, just across the road there, and that's the easiest kind of landmark for you. Yeah. Uh, yeah, a very nice place. Are you ready to? Yeah, let's go to the next one. The next one. Looking forward to it. Um, yeah, that's starting to open up a little bit now. That Milton Duff. Ah, so it's turned into another, another great Milton Duff. What, what are you getting from that one, though? It's like what are you kind of. To be honest, like, I don't. I'm not getting a lot of sherry. No, I'm getting a little bit more of the actual dust that coming through, mm-hmm. like the, a bit the apples and pears and stuff like that coming through. Mm-hmm. That just that kind of nice. Nice fruitiness coming through on it. Um, yeah. Um, so we'll move on to number three. If everyone's ready, we'll get eight to go through. So we are going to kind of, uh, we're going to push through it. Otherwise, we'll be here all night. Uh, which isn't a bad thing by any means. But no. I'm sure it's Saturday. You guys are busy. Craig's, Craig's busy as well. Yeah. Um, so the third one we're moving on to. Um, this is, again, a new, exper- a new experience for me. With regards uh, to Cadden Heads uh, bottles. Uh, and this is a new experience for me in terms of actual cast types. I'm not sure I've tried one yeah. of these cast types yet. So. I've got a, I've seen that sometimes got a mental block when it comes to saying I'm on the ad and I kept saying to people um, when they were asking about it, I kept saying uh, 
Um, a maraschino. <laughs> a maraschino. <laughs> and I said it. I said it once, and then as soon as I said that, I kept that kept coming out of my head. And I was like, why? Do, why do you keep saying oh, that? And then you check yourself straight after. But no, I knew what it was uh, the whole time. And then, uh, but it just kept coming out as that. And then customers were just looking at me. Uh, I couldn't. I couldn't. I just couldn't pronounce it to begin with. <laughs> I'm on mm. uh, <laughs> I'm on, I'm on <laughs> Sell what you see. So, yeah. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, this is a new thing for Lisa. It's a Craig Elkie, 13 year old. Um, this is 51.5%. Checking the strength of that there. Um, and it's been bourbon matured, we presume, um, until again uh, 2019 and then bottled, uh, matured in the Amontillado sherry uh, until bottling this year. Yeah, you can tell it's, you can tell the big differences between you know, Fino or also It's it's actually it's been brilliant actually to, to try the different sherry types next to each other as well. It's quite good. Yeah, this one's like, it gives you a big a big blast. It's not like it's ah. not rich. Uh, but it is it's fresh. I think anyway. I think I mean. But yeah. And Craig Ellicky, another kind of another staple one. Oh that is very, very good. Have you got any have you got much of this left? Oh, um, I do not believe we do actually. Um, this was a this was a popular one for us. Yeah, so, yeah. I think this is quite popular because it's different. You know, different cast types usually kind of take take a fancy. Yeah. And you know, it's, it's the affordability, affordability of it's quite good as well. I think. Yeah, what, definitely. What, what, what's the price? It's about fifty quid. Ah, yes, that really cheap. Generally, generally everything, um, bar the Bowmore and the Paul John is around the fifty pound mark. Um, so really great drinking whiskey. Um, this I think this was my favourite. When we were doing the tasting notes and stuff. Oh, I forgot you get to try. I get to do that. <laughs> in, in Campbelltown. We're sitting patiently. <laughs> it's the perks of being in Campbelltown. It costs too much to ship some. Oh. <laughs> we'll send them back. I saw uh, Empty. <laughs> <laughs> Save the planet. So. Uh, but yeah, this was a very popular one. This is one that, because it was a favourite of mine, any time I kind of. Um, you speak to people coming into the shop, and, and if you if you don't know, um how to get your hands in these bottles um i suppose a little kind of introduction into that as well would be quite good exactly, so yeah. the the best way to get involved with had head releases and be in with the biggest chance of getting these bottles um and the ones that are well, the ones that are the harder to get um, is by joining the cabin head club yep and the cabin head club it's uh, open to everyone of course and um, it's 50 pounds for a lifetime membership um, and that gives you a nice little welcome pack um, and it gives you um, prior knowledge of Cadenhead releases uh, generally about two weeks before the release right. and then the general public <clears throat> will find out um, the week before the release um, so you have that week in between to reserve bottles <clears throat> um, A majority do get nowadays a, more, a, a, a good majority of the, the more popular ones do tend to go uh, yeah. with, it, with the club and less with the public. You know, yeah, so. definitely. The club gets bigger and bigger. Yeah, it's, it's every probably, week. It's very much worthwhile. And the lifetime membership, that's that's the game changer there, isn't it? And yeah, you don't need to think about it again. It's a great, it, it's a great, a great gift for someone. Oh, brilliant gift. Father's Day, <laughs> <laughs> Father's Day tomorrow. Father's Day tomorrow. Father's Day tomorrow. Shut close to you. Oh, man. Well, yeah. I'll be late. I know what I'll be getting my dad because I forgot about that. <laughs> It'll be a Cadenhead club membership. And <laughs> um, so that's the best way to get involved. And when you, if you join the club, um, you receive your emails and all the contact details. Um, Nathan will have everything on club emails, so you can contact the shop there that's closest to you, whether it's Campbelltown or Edinburgh, with us two, um, or down in London, or any of the other six shops. Um, important as well, you know, you've also got a chance to get uh, club bottlings and such. You know, like only the, the club can get their hands on these ones, so. Um, uh, if you want to, you know, I think the club choose it, do they? They get the chance to choose. It, it, it changes sometimes. Changes yeah. sometimes, yeah. yeah. So, you know. Like, so that uh, has been done, yeah. But then you can see that, you know, like, it's, it's nothing that's just been given to you. Um, sometimes you get the chance to try something together with uh, a bunch of people and, yeah, and you can get to choose your own ball. And so it's quite good in that terms as well. Um, mm. You're really enjoying that one, actually. <laughs> it's good. It is, it's very good. That's it's very good though. <clears throat> that, it really is. It's good. Something. It's what's, what's the APB in this one? Um, 50. 
Oh, but high, is it? 51.5, yeah. But a nice strength as well. I really like when they sit at that kind of strength, like 48 to 52. Ah, I think that's I think that's the kind of optimal strength for me. Ah, I know, that's... I, well, I, I like, as I said, I like the run to 55 mark. Um, mm-hmm. 55 down is usually okay. Yeah. The, the ones above that, I'm definitely to add water. Um, <clears> um, yeah. Just, just it's, the, it's worth adding a little water. Ah, it's worth adding water anyway, but just because the, the viscosity is a bit high at times. Yeah. Um, um, but yeah, that's a standard. And it was really good training one by one. So all of these are still available. And like I was saying, yeah, you get your club emails, just call one of us and ask to reserve a bottle before the release or after the release, give us a call. And a lot of these are still available in both shops, I think. And um, which one, sir? Oh, the <clears throat> yes. Well, yeah. well, well we, I think we've went through a lot of other. Um, I think, was it released yesterday? Yeah, it was. They were released yesterday, so um, I think we've sold out uh, of a couple of couple of them. Um, yeah, the, the big, the big ones. The bigger ones, yeah, yeah. So, um, but I'll uh, I'll put something up on Facebook uh, with the availability of each balls uh, after the tasting. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was bloody very good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I was trying to contain my great description. Uh, <laughs> great description. Uh, is there any um, anyone asking about tasting tasting notes or questions there? Um, there's people asking where the master Roberto is. <laughs> we've got. A, I don't know if you can see it in the corner, but we've actually got a nice wee seat where Robert would probably plunk down on it quite nicely. Actually, go on. Uh, it's shot as <laughs> as a stick like he used to. <laughs> Can't say that. Can oh you? no, he doesn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> you are going to get your nuts. <laughs> Oh. Uh, but yeah, no, if we're ready to move on to the next one, I think you uh, you were quite keen to get onto this one. Oh, is this this one? It certainly is. Oh. It's not stopped talking about it since Pat- you arrived in Campbelltown, I don't think. Papa J, Paul John. <laughs> <laughs> this I is am, good. I'm, it's been a while since I've been a taste. Big, <laughs> big fan of Paul John. I am a big, big fan of Paul John. Um, loads of folk in the Edinburgh, Ed- Edinburgh shop uh, will know that when they come through because. Um, you know, you'll get asked this, what's your favourite whiskey? You'll get asked it, and I'll say, um, mine's at the moment was the Paul John 7, and I really, really enjoyed that one. So um, that was the only Paul John that I'd actually seen released in my time. The other ones were still there, the two six-year-olds and the five-year-old. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, when I seen the nine-year-old, I was just got a, a bit excited, and it was a great order. <laughs> I, genuinely, I genuinely got a bit excited. And... And this one's not disappointing already in the nose as well. What a great nose that is. <clears throat> so rich, it's, it's just you get so much from it. Um, and I believe this one is a spent four years in Camelton. Yeah, yeah, so they, so yeah. This is part of that kind of <clears throat> thing they were doing five years in Goa and, and several years in Camelton as well. So Yeah, so there would have been a few bought, up, um, uh, a few casks bought at about five years old. Uh, five years old. Uh-huh. Um, and it's brought over to Campbelltown and if you've been buying from Cadden Heads uh, semi-frequently or receiving club emails, you'll have seen the kind of progression of the Paul Jones. Right. And the where in the warehouse tastings as well, I think I believe that was part I was of it. Well. There, yeah. I, I had one of them in there. And uh, Don Donald, I think when I done my first warehouse tasting here, um Donald I believe uh, was telling us all about the different things about uh, Paul John. I got really interested into like the, the maturation periods a lot quicker and obviously because of the humidity. Um, I think the peat source from Isla, um, <clears throat> I believe, um, up to, uh, I'm sure it was a silo actually. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, and just when I tried it, it was just so different to the different styles. Uh, and it's also a, a good reason not just to set with Scotch whiskey, go maybe expand your horizons onto different areas of the world as well because there's always something good over there and um, it's quite good and yeah definitely they've got a really good name for themselves yeah. paul john as well like producing uh, like putting out good whiskey um their standard bottles have been pretty pretty steady just yeah really uh, as uh, much as i've tried them it's hard it's hard to go on to try an actual distillery bottles when you're when you work in a cabin head shop because you've got the agony of choice of a hundred different things yeah already um, um but again, it's, this is one. Uh, Paul John's one of those ones where um, people will be like, I, I, "I really want a Scotch whiskey," but this is what they described that they wanted. So, um, obviously, can't do a, like, a taste. Like, you can't give them a taste at the moment, just due to COVID rules and such. Um, but yeah, when I, when I could do that, I gave them a taste of it, 
they absolutely loved it. You know? Did you do it blind or sometimes? You sometimes you do it blind. You know, like oh, this, uh, they would maybe request that, like, "Oh, can you choose something for me and see if I like it? I'll buy it." And so we try that, and you know, you you wouldn't give them something you didn't you didn't think was right for them. You know, so you went and got something that they exactly described uh, and tailored that through like the sample bottles and stuff like that and see if we had it open gave them a wee try and yeah they would love it usually and um, majority of the time they would love it this one's not as smoky though i noticed um as a seven year old uh, um, yeah there was some there was some pt cast and some unpt cast so i think it's, it's, got, it's got a light in it a light kind of ashy not to it but yeah it uh, does almost have that so i was kind of thinking and you always second guess yourself is this one of the peaked ones or the unpeated ones nah. but there was the small batch ones but this is the oldest it's been it's been nine years old nine year old seven year old six yeah. year old small batch six year old authentic and five year old authentic um and there was the one that was the two the peaked cask and unpeated cask married yeah, together the small batch one yeah. married together um that would down treat but yeah this is the oldest it's been and it's not going it's certainly not getting any worse anyway. No, no, it's, 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 it's been very good. I think uh, Pop Tones are reasonably new distillery as well. I think it was at 97. Um, yeah. So that's actually reasonably Perfect. new. Um, and it's obviously them and Amber and in India, they're a bit different to the, the other brands that are in the, India because I believe that's a molasses thing. Um, it's more like rum, they make, isn't it? Um, and then they, they add like a, oh, a smidgen yeah, of whiskey in their blend. <laughs> it's usually because it's usually blends, but I think they. Um, they're the biggest consumers of whiskey in the world or something like that in India. Um, I believe it's a bit it's because of their biggest, classification of whiskey. Over. Biggest consumers of Johnny Walker. Is it Johnny Walker? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, I just remember reading up something about that. So. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's Johnny Walker. Um, I think Francis. Oh, one. for blends. Ah, yeah. Um, but yeah, no, yeah. you're definitely right. You're spot on with this. It's fantastic. Um, so and it, just, it gets better and better as well. Yeah, it, well, all of you guys that are trying this, and you, you, you probably, be, you know, will be tasting the exact same thing. So you can, um, you'll probably get what we're saying about this being a fantastic whiskey. So yeah, um, we've we've certainly still got a lot of this, not a lot of this left, but um, we've got enough of this left. Uh, it is worth. It's about seven. Yeah. It's about it's about eighty pounds. Uh, 85 pounds this one 85 pounds yeah. Uh, yeah so it's only nine years old of course um but it's not just coming from is that up that, in space side uh, what's it was that equivalent of um to scotch whiskey because of the maturation period does that look 20 um, oh i can't remember so yeah. 20 to 25 years old or something like that oh no i wouldn't know that uh, no, i'm sure that's what i get told before. i wouldn't know that there's somebody uh, telling you that it's just it's, it's so mature it was actually donald <laughs> donald brown oh well, <laughs> well there you go <laughs> It must be true. <laughs> it must be true. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I mean, when you see it, uh, the five year old, when you see it come over, and you're like, there's no way that's five years old. No, 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 it's, um, it's so mature. Um, mm. uh, and it, it's, um, what, what's the other thing about culture? I think it's uh, the way the, the evaporation works is that the ABV actually goes higher. Uh, yeah, no, it can, yeah, in certain places. Certain yeah. places, yeah. yeah. So I think they try to keep it underground and on that as well. So. Yeah, there's certain techniques people uh, uh, distillers use to keep it. In uh, Australia, you could do this. Yeah, yeah, as well. yeah. Um, but yeah. Right then. Very good one. Um, shall we move on to number five? Oh, Check it. On this one it feels as if like like we're nearing the end of a tasting because it's number five. Uh, <laughs> there's more to go yet. Uh, no, no more questions from anyone. Uh, yeah, again, if anyone's got any questions, the Paul John is certainly approving, Jim, uh, improving and approving. Uh, Jim says, Jim uh, and, and Jim Cameron as well. Paul John's excellent, Gavin Brunley, better with water. He says, Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, there you go. Again, whatever um, titles you're fan, so that's the thing. Yeah, 55.3 percent. That was so definitely wouldn't do any harm. A bit of water uh, in it. it takes a little bit of time that Paul John. Ah, you know, it it sounds like I, I can get time. what Gavin's saying with the add a wee bit of water. Um, a lot going on there, a lot going on. But I like I like interesting drums and such. So. Yeah, speaking of interesting drums, yes. Uh, we're on to this is a really interesting one. Oh. Normally, normally I would start off a taste. I don't know. I don't know if you guys still do this. It's kind of everybody start off. Yeah, well, I learned my tastings from you. Oh, there you go. That's why. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's how we do it. 
So I would always, I would always start off a taste, and you always, you kind of got in flavour. It, it's, it's always great doing a cabin heads taste because it's not just like going to spring It's not a great example because you've got long with hazel brown spring bank and all the different kind of styles. But mm. if you go to a so and so distilleries tasting, that's just the same whiskey, just maybe in different cast types or different ages or blah blah blah. But to have different styles of whiskey, different types of whiskey. Like this Inver Gordon we're moving on to. This Inver Gordon is 14 years old, 62%. Um, this is a grain whiskey. And this is where I would normally start off my tastings with because it's normally the lightest. Um, so you can start off as, it's normally much older as well. You can start off with a 28, 29 year old um, Inver Gordon or so. And it's you can almost guarantee it's going to be the least kind of palate. A fender. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Great description. <so> <laughs> um, but yeah, you, you can. It's it's good to start off with a taste like that because the flavour that it's not going to be anything that's just going to kind of overpower anything else. Mm. Yeah, it's good to have. But this, yeah. but there's a reason. <clears throat> there's a reason this is number five and not number one um, because it's a different type of green whiskey. Well, it's the same type of green whiskey, just matured differently. So this is uh, been mature and all also sherry since again 2019. We were busy in 2019. Ah, oh, very busy. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of casking shoved about then. Okay. Um, um, aye, no, they certainly were. But yeah, it's a, it's a strange thing. So if you're not familiar with grain whiskey, I think, uh, I think it was Donald that used to describe it as the, the ugly sister uh, to malt whiskey. Which I hope nobody, nobody's offended by that. Ah, no. Um, but it's not. It's not pretty. You can't go and see the distillery. You can't go and take pictures of the nice stills or do tours or anything like that. It's essentially a factory to make as much whiskey as possible, and they want to make it as well as they can, um, but using column stills to make as much as possible uh, in order to use it for blended whiskey generally. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> um, so the only place you're going to really get to try whiskey like this. Um, is an independent bottle uh-huh. like Cadden Heads, and it's it's very very rare um, to have something to have green whiskey bottled this young, um, fourteen years old. Generally, we've done people, a couple, we've done been, a couple, yeah. But if, the yeah. thing is, we wouldn't, we wouldn't bottle if we didn't think it was right. Yeah, that's so, exactly, that's, uh, yeah. so um, but this one's fantastic. You know, I was looking forward to another green sherry yeah. whiskey after the Strathclyde. Yeah, and know, it's like it's just, just to them. Oh, yeah, just giving it that extra kick. Exactly, you know well. what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and it shows that it doesn't have to be 25, 30 years old yeah. as well. Again, and, and uh, affordability as well of this one. Uh, yeah, 40. For, yeah, yeah, 40, 40 pounds, 45. Ah, it's very, very, very yeah. good value for money again. And um, yeah, to, I mean, it's not, as I was say, it's like a, great, a good way to start off trying green whiskey. And I suppose it is a good way, but it wouldn't be typical of green whiskeys you'd find, so you wouldn't expect to have this. Kind of type. Generally, people won't um, mature grain whiskey in anything but bourbon. It's not really yeah. worth the. It's not. Yeah. It's not worth the money of a. It, and it's, it can be said as well, though, if you're a, a bourbon drinker, you know, like it, that this would tend to be more your style. Um, if you do prefer bourbons over scotches, um, so that's it's it's quite good for that. Um, but then we're taking in a different sort of spin. The sherry cask influence for mm. this one's quite yeah. Good. It's just it's just good trying things, and that's kind of that's cabin heads to a tea. And that's like what we see with this tasting is um, experimenting with this stuff. Um, so it's, very, it's easy to get a hold of casks of green whiskey, as far as I'm to understand. Mm-hmm. Anyway, right. Oh, well, um, this this one here is you can get still good bits of the grain coming through. You know, again, like the kind of biscuity, ah, that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, was it gritty? The word to get used there. <laughs> I can't describe that. I can't use that anymore. <laughs> but, no. but no, it really is good for like, yeah, that, that would kind of stand out. But that, when you've had some kind of like good quality bourbons, yeah. yeah, that would kind of stand up against. It's got the sweetness coming from the sherry. Although green whiskey is sweet when it gets well, it is sweet, but when it gets older, that's when you kind of get more. Nice. But having yeah. that little kick from the sherry, it kind of gives it that bourbon. Ah, it's, it's, like I mean, American bourbon it's, it's a very well balanced drum, very well balanced. Um, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm just glad I'm getting to taste them. So happy. <laughs> You've <laughs> got happy. samples up in the shop. No, nah, no, but it's, I, I'm not. I'm, I'm here. <laughs> I've been here <laughs> yeah. all <for a> week. <laughs> I'm sure they'll be they'll be delving into them as soon as uh, you get back. No, well, maybe. Um, 
but yeah, certainly I think this was this wasn't obviously the most popular one. It's hard to like Craig said earlier on with um with them not being able to do samples uh, in the shop and we're the same here as well, of course. Um it's hard it's hard to just it's hard to kind of I don't want to say sell this bottle to to someone who doesn't know or is interested in trying something like this it's, because it seems Again, it because seems, whiskey is subjective, you know, so your ta your your what you get from a whiskey might be different to what we taste, you know. Mm -hmm. So like um uh so it's sometimes easier just to give you the the sample or, mm -hmm. or something. You know, I'm not saying it's making the job easy, it kinda is and it isn't, but um it's it allows you to actually just approve the taste straight away and then you can purchase your bottle and such. We we do miss doing that as well, plus um we do miss having so many people in the, the shop and you, you obviously work there mm -hmm. and um you'd have it would be absolutely buzzing around this time of year as well, yeah. yeah. Yeah, <laughs> you don't get a minute to yourself. Oh, it's, but it's good. I love it. I yeah, love it, and I'm it's really good. Um, it certainly is. Yeah, it's been like it's. Yeah, it's been a long time. It feels like a long time since there's been anything like that at all. Aye, aye. Um, but yeah, that'll be that'll be the next thing. Being able to do samples in the shop. And have you guys? Do you guys do any tasting at the moment? Uh, no, unfortunately not. Um, I'm not too sure when we'll start that again. We'll we're, we're kind of you know played by ear by the local government rules and such like that, but. Um, I'm, we're hoping to get it back on um, because we we enjoy it as much as you guys uh, uh, delivering the tastings and such. It's just good fun. And, um, we, we miss the folk as well uh, and making new friends and meeting old friends and such. It's, it's always it's always good. Um, yeah, no, that's yeah. It. And we're on the same boat. And so same we're used to this. You've got the big tasting room, so it's maybe it's slightly easier for us. <laughs> um, Do you know? But it's still kind of working through the kinks of actually how you do it and what to do and we'd like to do them outside but you just can't trust Campbellton weather well no in the slightest um, it's always sunny here i don't know if you're on a boat and then it rains <laughs> <laughs> and then it rains Tropical. Later, yeah. um, um, no four seasons in one day that's typical uh, it has, it's happened doesn't it so. um yeah don't let our tans fool you <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, this was great. And it's yeah, I think I think it's the right place in this taste. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh, again, very rich, like the Paul John. In terms of the levels of richness, but a little bit thicker. Um, it is. Uh, yeah, it's, it's got more sippy. Yeah. 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 Generally, the green whiskeys don't tend to be. Well, Amber Gordon, I would say, would be the oiliest uh, so of the green does, whiskeys. It does come from like that. Um, it might take a wee bit from the sherry as well. Um, but yeah, typically. Green whiskies for me anyway, they can feel quite thin. Yeah. You know, the flavours there, yeah, but they yeah. can feel quite thin. But Ember Gordon always had that kind of an extra bit. Aye. Um aye. for whatever reason that is. Somebody I'm sure will be able to explain that to me at some point. Um Gavin, sorry, the Ember Gordon is forty five pounds if I remember right. I think so. So I, I believe in Edinburgh, I believe we may be out of that one. Um okay. as of today. As of today, yeah. Jeez, well, yeah. we've still got plenty of it, so Gary, <laughs> if you, but the thing if is, you want uh, any, uh, uh, not plenty. Uh, we were going to talk about reservations and such anyway, so Lewis, how, how do you go about res uh, reserving here? Um, yeah, we, can't, we briefly touched on it earlier on. Um, you get your club emails, but basically the the best way to do things um, is just um, as soon as you find out about the bottles, assuming... Obviously, it's not one that's already been released. If it's due to be released, then you can call the shop or email the shop. Um, you can find all the details online to do that. Um, and one of the team here uh, will get back to you as soon as possible. Obviously, it does get very busy. Sometimes it's hard um, with customers in the shop, so you might not get to the phone all the time. Um, yeah, that's one of the frustrating things. You know, you're, oh, you know, yeah. you're in the shop and the phone keeps going and you, you have to... Yeah, you're doing different things. Or if you're mm. on the phone already and you can hear that somebody's wanting through and then you miss them and you're like, oh, God. So it, is, yeah. it, can, be, it can be tricky to get through, especially on, especially on the likes of release days. We understand the frustrations of some people. Yeah. yeah, like we understand that. Oh, um, yeah. We're just as frustrated not getting to you as you are to us, you know. Um, yeah. So, um, but yeah, that's that's the simplest way. Just get in touch. Um, you find out about these bottles, whether it's from the club email or Facebook or wherever you've seen it. Um, and yeah, we'll put you down on the list. Obviously, some of the the more desirable bottles um, may go to a draw at the end of it. Um, but yeah, most of the ones are generally available for us. Um, 
So yeah, that's kind of that's the way to do it. Ah, well, we do it kind of ever so similar and slightly different at the same time. Ever so similar. Ever so similar. <laughs> <laughs> this is your turn to do that. <laughs> um, uh, so yeah, so slightly, slightly different. Uh, we don't do any draws. It's more of a first come first serve sort of kind of basis. Um, it's just the way we've been doing it um, since um, well, since I've been there as well. So we just carry on. Uh, if it's not broken, uh, don't fix it. So. Um, it just still keeps it kind of fair as well. Um, what fair for us? Um, yeah, less stressful. Yeah, definitely less stressful. <laughs> Again, it's, it's 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 to be honest with you, it's, it's if you send an email straight away after your club uh, or general public announcement, um, that's that's sometimes the best way because we do try to sift through that uh, maybe first thing in the morning, and then your phone calls come in once we're opened and such. Um, and you know the thing is, well, you can only answer one call at a time. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, if you do, it, it's important to maybe just email and then phone. Uh, and then, but we've also got Facebook Messenger as well. Um, but um, not all of us are um, it's digi- it, digitally attuned. Yeah, uh, you know, like <laughs> it can be quite hard. <laughs> getting, getting, sure. It can be quite hard getting back to the Facebook. Uh, post. Oh like, yeah, it's, it's 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 just different because sometimes you put your notifications off for work and such like that, and then. Mm-hmm. Um, I know I, I don't use Facebook very much. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, so that's uh, yeah. So um, it's, 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 it, it, it's, it's a social it's, media guy. It's, sure. <laughs> <laughs> it's important that you maybe try all channels of um, because that's that's sometimes the best way. Uh, yeah, and if you need um, more advice, just phone. And then we will uh, we'll do our best to get a bottle for you. Uh, again, the popular ones will go very quick, so you need to make sure you're in quick. Um, I mean, we we'll go through maybe. I don't know how many emails. There's so many emails um, when our release is done, so it's quite difficult to. Yeah, um, yeah, it does. Um, yeah. But uh, I, that, that's pretty much all there is to it. We, we just don't do a drawing compa- compared yeah. to you guys. No, that's it. Aye. Easy as that. Um, right, we will we'll move on to the next one. If hopefully everyone's ready. They have a lot. And again, another different cast. This is this different. Is a, this is like loads of It's brilliant, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. It's no, good to try different. Yeah, have you done the the warehouse or the the cabin head warehouse tasting for the the um, the virtual oh yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Norway malts festival? Um, then it's kind of it's kind of similar to that as well. Like mm-hmm. like there's just so much it's like unusual stuff, and that's what a cabin head tasting I think should be about anyway. It's not. We it's were not about known. Well, it was it was kind of known that we would do the unusual stuff. So mm-hmm. we'll that away. Yeah, and you, um, you, can't, you don't want to go and do a tasting with, with the Ardbeg and McCallum and all the rest of it. Well, and, some would argue with Well, no, <laughs> I, was, I suppose you do. Um, but, I mean, for £30 to try, if you, if you, if you've if you tried a lot of this stuff before, if you've tried old Ardbegs and old McCallums and stuff like that, then, I mean, once you've tried, once you've tried some of them, I've almost tried them all. Yeah, sometimes it is. I'm not going to throw big in that. No, no, you can't. <laughs> um, but having these, yeah, these unusual distilleries, unusual cast types, having the two together and having a lineup of eight of them on the, on the um, Online Malts Festival. Is that what we're calling it? Yeah, the Online Malts Festival. Yeah, yeah. Um, all the unusual things in that as well. That's the, That should be the epitome of a cabin head taste. And obviously there will be bigger ones. But yeah, mm-hmm. having to be able to try this this stuff is that's that's the way forward ah, yeah definitely think, yeah, anyway. yeah. um any questions about before we move on to the next one any questions about that um, um what's it Denver Gordon now? last question was Gavin about them Gordon just the, just it. Gavin yeah. Yeah. okay there we go. um but yeah Jim Cameron says Denver Gordon is very sweet that is uh, yeah that's it uh so yeah we're moving on to the next one which is the, um the Avalor um I have a little 10 year old, and that one I believe is finished in a ruby port, is it? Uh, yes, it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't <laughs> know if it was finished or. Glenn Boris is just getting more Tormor. That just, sounds like a Jason Julia. Nah, that sounds like Jason Julia, right? Yeah. Aye. Um, we'll speak when we're back in the show. <laughs> <laughs> sounds like he's in trouble. Aye. <laughs> <laughs> he's always in trouble, and he knows it. <laughs> um, but. Uh, the I, this one here it's smelling lovely already. Yeah, the colour on it's nice. I know we say you don't want to look at the colour, but you know when you see the colour and it's like that, you think oh, it's a good colour. I know the thing is you shouldn't really go with colour sometimes, but yeah, you know, 
it you know, does have that attractiveness. To yeah, it, yeah, definitely. This, like, this is going to be silly, obviously. Like red grapes. Yep. Done yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that a big thing red there? grapes. Yeah, yeah. And um, I, I mean, like some like toffee art or something like that. I don't mm-hmm. know. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, we mix it too. But yeah, Abel, I was Abel, I was another good one as well. That's that there's been a pretty consistent good Abel Yeah, yeah. I'm, I, again, I've not seen I've not seen uh, in a wee while, so it was again another one that kind of excited me to see. Um, I can't remember the last Abel Hours yeah, was done. Was it? Ah, uh, no, it was was it a shared one we done. Uh, there was a shared one. Was ah, eight, there was, was eight years old. Ah, no, that was quite nice. And there's a like seventeen year old before that. Yeah, that, I, that I didn't see that. I didn't see the seventeen. Mm-hmm. Though, yeah, that was before my time. Before your tenure, uh, but yeah, it might be. I can't, remember, I can't recall many more. Um, it's so always yeah. a good one. It's a big name as well, isn't it? So it's, it's. Yeah, this was always this was always one of the really popular ones um, in Edinburgh. People would come in. They they would always say, "I'm like one of my favourite whiskies is Savalor Abuna," <laughs> and you think, "Well, that's a good one." Because obviously, it's are predominantly shared and uh, yeah. cask strengths so although you're in the right place yeah. as long as you put something shared on your board or in our shop yeah um so yeah people do tend to know that as well and it gets about a little bit so it's a good one to have um yeah i think we've still got quite a few a few bottles of this left and oh, I'm, I'm really looking forward to actually having these on the shelf and yeah yeah no, i know you, you can't see it on your board I know it's it's uh, I kind of want an, an element of that, but um, we'll talk about that in the future, hopefully. But um, uh, I, I came in and your shop's all lovely, Liz. Actually, I noticed that it's all redone. Um, so if you do come and visit the Canton shop, you'll notice that as well, and then you'll maybe get be able to pick up one of these lovely drams. Yeah, that we're having tonight. Yeah, recently decorated. Ah, uh, the shop staff have been busy redecorating the Campbelltown <laughs> shop. So if you need your house done, <laughs> Lewis is your man. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I don't know if we're doing that. We need to see it first. I think. Um, but yeah, uh, that was good. It's kind of just started opening up again in the shop and getting more. Yeah, no, it's, it's uh, you'll you'll probably notice there'll be a, a lot bit more. And when I came in the shop today, you know, I seen a, cu- a few customers come in and go. Um, mm-hmm. uh, Couple of tourists, maybe. I think it was a regular. It was a uh, somebody from the town in today? I believe it was. But, it probably was. Uh, yeah, we are in the so, town, of course. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know, but sometimes it's a more tourist thing, you know. Um, Gavin said he has mixed the Ember Garden with sample one. Has he? Mm-hmm. He does like that. He does like blending yeah. them, and he'll probably try and get me to try this. <laughs> um, but I'll probably, you know what? I'll, I'll listen to him. You know, he's wiser than me. He's wiser than me, so that's just another older, way to say he's older. older, 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 older <laughs> that's another way just to say he's older. That's <laughs> another rat in the middle. So I think he's back to Edinburgh, I think. It's fine. Keeps me on my toes, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, uh, this one's going down my treat as well. Yeah, definitely. Oh, man. I think it's the first time I've had anything in Ruby Port from Cadden Cadden Heads. Not that I forgot Cadden Heads there, I was just trying to think. If I'd ever had any Ruby Port. Have you seen any? Uh, Long Row 11. Of course. Oh, yes. Of course it was. Yeah, I'm yeah. Remember that one. Yeah. I remember the lot and the Tullibar oh, down 37 as well. That how was did I forget about yeah, the Tullibar? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, lovely. That was, that was very good. I knew there was, I had a feeling there was something, but it was just. Yeah. But the thing, some, sometimes these Tullibar ones, people can say there's maybe not an, like enough character there. It's just a nice, easy going dram. Uh, so that 27 year old that they've done, that was quite good with that. Um, because you'll know as well as I, uh, we used the Tullibarns and the Tysons, and they would be awfully porous in, uh, in terms of the ABV. Um, yeah, yeah so well. very, like, 41% and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, so with that last one, that was quite good, where they added the Ruby Port. Um, but what's the ABV in this one? Was? This one is, I should really remember that, yeah. 55.7%. 55.7, again, around that 55 yeah. mark that I said I like. Mm-hmm. 55% yeah. mark, so... Yeah, and again, this one will come in at about fifty-five pounds as well. Another, yeah, there we go. Yeah, like you can't, you honestly can't. Like you can't miss these for drinking. As well. No, it's I know it's, 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 it's brilliant. Have you still got these ones available in the shop? Mm, I believe we maybe have one or two bottles left. Yeah. But um, this was one of the. This was certainly one of the more popular. Yeah, ones. I think this was. Um, it, you've got the next ones coming up. Um, I'll mention uh, Bowmore and Annandale. These ones. And pretty much went instantaneously, and then the Abalamour was was next. And to be honest with you, a lot of folk took them for Gordon's 
straight away as well, yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. they, they, they just remembered, like, you, you put it back to previous uh, incarnations of Green and Sherry. You know, yeah, the girls and nine-year-old. Uh, oh, oh the, that, that was the Madeira one. That was beautiful, wasn't it? Yeah, so, yeah, again, good. very underappreciated whiskies. Um, yeah, trying different, different, yeah, trying different things. That is the main way to do it. Will we, will we push on with the next one? We'll push on with the next one, Lewis. Um, what is the next one? The next one is, this is going to be an interesting one, I think, for everyone. Um, this one is the Annandale. So, of course, this is the first time I knew there was one I forgot to take note of. There. <laughs> you can squeeze these out back home, but I don't, I don't know. I think they might, <laughs> I think they might have picked up something from that. Um, so, yeah, Annandale, six years old. Uh, this is peated as well. Uh, to what level? I'm not entirely sure, but it's not overly. It doesn't jump out at you, so you don't expect something like a Kahuna or an Arbeg or anything like that. It's just a more subtle peat. Yes. Yeah. Very rounded. But it, it is more maritime as well, rather than your kind of spring bank long row peat. It definitely feels more. Got a slight brine in this too. Yeah, it feels more coastal. Obviously, a lot more desolate coming through in that because yeah. of the age. Um, uh, and this has been in a bourbon barrel for the full six years. And yeah, this is the first time we've ever bought it. I think this is the first time we've ever bought it anything from any of the new distilleries. Obviously, everyone, most people who know, most people who drink whiskey will know about the opening of a huge amount of distilleries uh, in recent years. In the last 10, 20 years, there's been loads of distilleries popping up left, right and centre. So new distilleries means they'll need to sell casks and obviously can hence will, uh, will take up the offer um, to take some of these nice casks off their hands if they're, if it's going to be, if it's the right distillery that's going to be, if it's something we can see yeah. I think a future one. Yeah, no, a future definitely. one. Um, so yeah, this is the first time I think when we done the Caddenhead in the Courtyard event. If anyone attended that, they, um, we had the Caddenhead's cage for one day only. Yeah, I remember seeing that. I was quite jealous of that, actually. Yeah. When I seen that. Um, <laughs> yeah, there was a lot of nice stuff in there. There was the big board with all the with all the bottles on it. And I do vaguely remember seeing an Arendale in there. It would have been four years old. Yeah, I think it was four years so old. So that would have been just probably really, been the same cast or a similar yeah. cask. Yeah, yeah. Um, quite possibly. Yeah, because yeah. it was only one bottle that was pulled from that cask. Um, so this may well be the same cask. Yeah. So if you're sitting at home and you've got that, and there you go. There's a perfect comparison. Oh, ah, yeah, brilliant. You know, sometimes it is nice to have that kind of similar tram, uh, just like a maybe age statement or maybe cast type to maybe contrast it with. And yeah, that is. You good? Yeah. Did you did you say you enjoyed this before? Or you uh, not, your favourite in this one? Uh, well, the thing is, though, is look, uh, Paul John's my favourite. You know, <laughs> you can't go wrong, Paul John. Um, believe it or not, it was actually Emma Gordon and Paul John that uh, really stood out for me when I got to try little samples of these ones. Um, the Annandale. I mean, I do like my my smoky stuff, but I think it, maybe because I've tried the Annandale and the Bone were next to each other again. You know, this I still like it. It's still a very good mm. tram, very top quality. But, yeah. Um, for six years old, it's not. It's very again. That's what you've got to do. Yeah, for, right, for six, six, six yeah. years old. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I mean, there's good things to come to you. Well, you can put it into comparison with the sort of heavily peated, the oh, yeah. and heavily peated, and it's it maybe not got the same kind of oomph mm -hmm. that that does. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say so. Um, at least this oh, is, it's, this it's is a, this a lot mellower than that. Yeah, yeah, this, yeah, is, yeah. this is only this bottle of Adendale, of course. We yeah, a lot more, a lot more approachable. Um, yeah, because the heavily peat is not exactly something for beginners, really. Beginners, you say, like, well, people just start yeah. off. Um, but yeah, starting off with a smoky whiskey like this one, even at six years old, it's not too spinny. It's it's, yeah. kind of, it's it's not overly, it's not a very fast maturation. It's kind of what you'd expect from a six year old whiskey yeah. to look like. Everything's went well. You know, yeah, much, yeah. And it feels like this is going to be this is going to be yeah. something. Yeah. Whether or not there are more casks in the warehouse, I'm sure there will be if there's one. We'll go check after this. Eh? <laughs> well. Might as well. Eh? It's not often Craig. Let's <laughs> roll up the road back <laughs> ask to um, Robert wouldn't let you back in the shop. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's what you'd expect from a six-year-old whiskey. When you, we will see. Hopefully, this will be like a, a Paul John 
kind of situation. You'll see ones coming out in the future. You might see the odd different cast type. You might see this and that. And hopefully, um, no, I'm sure there, there is. Um, there's new distilleries coming through as well that we have that we had casks of that will be that will be bottled. And it'll be interesting for everyone to try. Um, although you've got the, their own releases coming out just now, I'm not going to divulge any names. Um, but to be the kind of first people at bottling them independently and having their own single cask bottled with them, that's um, yeah, that's going to be something that's going to be very like, interesting for um, the future. And you probably will see with the quality of Annandale, you probably will see it being um, probably quite popular as as the years go on. Uh, be with with us or with other brands and such like that as well. So it's that's, just that's very good. Uh, it's good. It keeps going back. It's good. Maybe it's just me. <laughs> it's like chocolate orange kind of smell. Ah, yeah. Smell. yeah. I'll give you that. Thank you very much. That's what I gave you the night. That's what I gave you the the last one. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, that is yeah. That there's good things to come certainly from Captain Head's bottom for this. Thing. Again, it's just mel very nice, mellow, easy going dram. After maybe trying some more um, lovely chaotic stuff there uh, and having a nice mellow drum, it's actually been quite nice. Chaotic? Yeah, slightly chaotic. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I like I like the interesting drams, you know what I mean? I love that. So I usually use that word to describe it. Um, I'm sure that goes down well. Oh, the, the, <laughs> <laughs> you, you've worked in Edinburgh. It's, 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 uh, we love the chaos. We love chaos. Yeah. Organized, <laughs> organized, organized chaos. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, somebody was asking. Well, we'll get on to somebody was asking what's happening to the cage in the Campbellton shop. We'll oh. get on to that. Uh, and Jim's asking why G on the Aberlour. Oh. Um, it's just for the Glenlivet at the end. Yeah. I would certainly imagine anyway. Yeah. I need to have a look. Yeah, that's it really. Um, so yeah, if you if you've had Cadenhead's bot Cadenhead bottlings before from Speyside, um, the likes of say Linkwood or Altmore, um, chance well they do have a uh, hyphen Glenlivet on the end of it, the suffix, um, it's a historical reference, um, so that's why the G is on you the You love telling us in your tastings. Yeah, 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 you love telling us. That's why they went on so long. <laughs> <laughs> Just telling the story over and over oh, no. <laughs> Have you heard the story of John Smith? <laughs> <laughs> pistols. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, that, was a, that was a feel good. But yeah, that's that's the reason for that. Um this was this was it was good to see this one going so fast. Oh yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I wasn't entirely sure, not like, I knew it was good. Um like we all knew it was good. Uh, but to have it just in a club you know, see it there a lot of half the half the club members might not have heard of Anand Dale. And the other half will have heard of it, but it'd be a, a wary of kind of splashing the cash. Yeah. Um on such a youthful whiskey. Um but no, everyone seems keen to try this new stuff, so it yeah, bodes well for the future and when this stuff starts coming out from Cadden. No, it's, no, it's uh, exciting. It's right. definitely exciting to see different um all these different kind of distilleries get their chances. Shows sure, people that people are keen to try this. this and and that these new distilleries are producing good whiskey, not just like mm. you know churning yeah. out. They do they do have a good name yeah. for themselves yeah. at the moment anyway. Things can always change. You never know. Um so the so the cage in Campbellton, I will I will address this because this is something you're gonna see uh, see in the future when you come to come to Campbelltown, everyone will be um, generally descends on the Cadenhead shop in Campbelltown, uh, expecting to find the Springbank Cage, um, which has been a staple shopping experience for whiskey lovers in Campbelltown. We hear it all the time in Edinburgh. Yeah, <laughs> um, and it is, it is. If you've never been to Campbelltown, if you've never visited, then it is it is a dream to be able to get kind of bottles like that, that you just never, yeah. you never but see. You one, of, one of one in the world, individual cask samples drawn from from each cask. But I won't go into too much detail on that. Um, but the Cabinhead shop is no longer home to the cage. And it's, yeah. uh, no, it's, it's moved up to the Springbank Distillery Shop, uh, along with the Demijohns. Um, so that's where I don't expect to see anyone in the cabinet head shop anymore. <laughs> that'll be that'll be the, that'll be the first for the cage and the cage one. No, well, no, no. Expect to see all the same faces, just carrying more bags when they arrive. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, there will be there are plans in place 
um, to fill the cage, to fill the hole uh, in the cabin head shop that's left. Um, but yeah, you'll find out more. Time will tell. Oh, okay. Time will tell. Um, that we teaser there, is that what it is? But yeah, it's certainly, it's certainly interesting things um, in the making. I would say so. That's what's happening with that. And again, the same rules will stand. Um, nobody knows. Well, you, yeah, you won't be able to phone the distillery shop and ask to reserve bottles from the cage. It's just a matter of being there. That's that's a great element as well because yeah. it helps the town out as well. Yeah. You know, like it takes people down. And the thing is, it's a lovely place to visit. You know, um, the locals will not bite you unless it's the weekend. But <laughs> uh, but it's a lovely it's a lovely week. Uh, Lovely we get away as well at the same time. <laughs> I was thinking they might. They um, might. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. I'm saying. Um, but yeah, so that, that's what's happened. So yeah, next time you visit Camelton, you won't have that there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the cabin head side of the shop, as Craig said, it's all been nicely decorated to to make up for all that. Very so impressed. I was very impressed. So um, we'll need to get you up to decorate the end of my shop then. It's just been decorated. The end of my shop? Mm. Oh, I know I've done that, but you know... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Do you guys? You, you still don't send overseas, do you? I was going to say. No, no. We only send. Um, that's that's one thing we have. Uh, we only send within the UK mainland. Um, uh, but now we're part of the the Cat and Heads family. Uh, we were before franchised and owned by Mister Neil Clapperton and Alan Murray, who Alan Murray has since retired. And um, and we wish him good luck on his retirement. And uh, we have now joined the Cadnets family. Uh, you, were Cadnets always, you were always, always the Cadnets. there, I know. Wait, yeah, yeah, but Cadnets Retail Limited, you know, that's, yeah. that's what we are now. So, um, but I, I'm not too sure what will maybe change with that in the future. I don't know what happens with with that. All uh, we only just um, joined uh, back. Uh, in December uh, mm. of last year, and some of you may know that already. Um, but yeah, so you know things might change over time. Um, but yeah. at the moment, we're only UK mainland. So yeah, uh, for deliveries. So. Speedy delivery as well. All packed yeah. up. By yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. But we're, we're very good. At so that. when you're so when you're trying to unpack your boxes and you're wondering it's why there's like, why I, there's three rolls of tape being used <laughs> to that these boxes, it's because of the uh, Yeah, some somebody described. Yeah, it's Fort Knox to try and get into it. Yeah. <laughs> better, uh, better safe than sorry. Yeah, exactly, you know. Um, with regards to Camelton, of course, we ship um, everywhere in the UK, mainland, and also overseas. Um, yeah, it's, it's it's been a bit of a struggle recently. Um, without stating the obvious, I think we're all aware what the obvious is with the, the issues with shipping and taxation and all the rest of it. Um, so there's been a few obstacles, there's been a few speed bumps along the road, but we are getting to a stage where things are, we are sending things out consistently and safely and everything's getting to the right place. And I know, again, we've talked about frustrations before, I understand if you're watching from overseas, anywhere in Europe specifically, you'll not be used to receiving emails from DHL or anything like that. Yeah. Um, Asking for asking for taxis, and like, we would we would do our best to to make it as easy as possible, to make it as cheap as possible for you. Um, but yeah, these are the, these are the things we're currently dealing with, and I know it's not I know it's not easy. Um, but yeah, these are yeah, it's tricky. Um, and of course, we send further afield, Singapore, Japan, um, all around the rest of the world, essentially. Um, so yeah, if you ever if you're ever looking for anything, if you're watching from any of these places. Um, then all you have to do is get in touch. Uh, one of our guys will send you, if you want to see the list of Cadenhead bottles we have in the shop, we've got a price list available, I'm sure you guys have Yeah, we, we set up a price list as well. Um, that can be sent straight through. Um, and yeah, no matter yeah. where you are, and, almost and, in the world. And again, you have Cadenhead.shop as well. Yeah, of course. An online yeah. Site. Um, again, you know, the stock uh, may differ to what we've actually got in the shops and such. So, um so when you look at this, when you look at the website, and then you maybe want to phone us up and speak to us, um, we might not have those things available. So if you do really want that bottle, maybe click and buy it before maybe somebody else does, because uh, that yeah, may be the last one. That's the thing, you know. You need to watch out as well. Um, but yeah, it's it's I believe that's obviously it's all done here. So they're 
worldwide as well, aren't they? So yeah, 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 yeah pretty much. Um, pretty yeah. much. Well, pretty yeah, much. it's uh, any other like any other on, online retailer. If, if you shipping to your country is an option, then we ship yeah. there. And prices vary for yourself, and obviously, and we're ten pounds flat rate in Edinburgh for deliveries and such. So for everything, for would be one bottle of twelve bottles. Really? <laughs> flat rate. <laughs> I suppose it's just Campbellton prices, isn't it? It's um, actually getting from Campbellton. Yeah, I mean Edinburgh's, Edinburgh's pretty good, and it's usually next day delivery as well. Um, depends on the time you phone. Depends yeah. on how long it takes you to wrap all the tape around the nah, box. Yeah. <laughs> that might take a day. To go get so, more tape, you know. <laughs> um, right then, we'll, we move on to the yeah the final dram. Yeah, the final dram that I know a lot of these will probably have been waiting for. Try not to clink the glasses, but you can hear it in the microphone. Can't, can't, can't man. Oh, yeah. okay. I just did it. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, this was definitely the big hitter, popularity-wise. Oh, yeah, yeah, this was the first one to go. Um, again, uh, you, you know you know what's coming as well when, it, you, when you see that. You see, as soon as you see the name sometimes, you just know. It's, it's, the thing is, even the boys in the bottling hall once they see the name, they know that's already sold out. Mm -hmm. um, as they're packing it, um, it's just a matter of just alerting you to that. Um, but again... Um, there's, all these drums have been fantastic tonight, so don't don't just like maybe think like, oh, I never got that drum. There's still maybe another drum there that you might like. Uh, you probably will like actually. Um, but we'll go into this one anyway. You know, a lot of people maybe have had the chance to get this bottle as well. So this is also a good thing about this. Yeah, yeah. This is another thing. You having the all eight drums in the bone war, using a few bottles of this bone war, because otherwise, no, the the two hundred <laughs> or so people who get a bottle will get to try it, of course. Yeah, but yeah. Or half of them might, the other half might keep it. Some of them might sell it. It's, it's hard to tell. We'll not, get, we'll not get into that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, just been able to try this. And like Craig said, it's, it is the most popular one, but it's by no means, it's certainly not my favourite amongst the eight. Is it um, I love my peated stuff, though. I do like my peated whiskies. Um, um, no, I'm sitting, I'm sitting nice in that Craig Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's. Yeah, the, this stuff, it's been a while since we've bottled anything from Bomo, so I almost forgot just how popular it gets. And I know all the standard stuff, obviously it's a very, very popular whiskey, um, and it's got a huge fan base, but just because it's been a while, you forget just how passionate people are about this stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it is, it is very, very good. And it kind of, it's, I don't know whether it's because you don't see a lot of affordable single cast, cask strength Bomo's, Around, not from the distillery, not from other independent bottles. But this one what, sits at what, one hundred and thirty-five pounds. One hundred and thirty, I believe. One hundred and thirty. So uh, yeah, 19... around that mark, yes. Yeah, so nineteen-year-old Bowmore um, for one hundred and thirty. Yeah, it's... yeah, that's um, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah so you know, if if you look at like the thing is, so Bowmore, like their their name's big enough already, isn't it? They they've got no need to um, sell casks or whatever and all that as well. So. Um, but when you do see the independent bottlings of it and such like that, people, like, you will see some prices at ridiculous levels and then you've obviously got the can head price, which is always always pretty good. But this one, in comparison to maybe other ones, it's, it's a very good price. Uh, and it's a very good price for the, but its own quality as well. Uh, its own quality is definitely a very good price. It's um, um, very different on the nose. It's a lot of, I think it's a lot of peaty on the nose. And then you taste yeah, it. And yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's, it's it's a lot yeah, more yeah. subtle on the taste. Yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely more subtle. Um, it's a good age as well. I think the last one was the seventeen year old. Yeah, seventeen. Was it the, either the gold, was it a gold label? Or the old gold label small matches? We yeah, there there. was an authentic one as well. Well, I, I remember um, the authentic too. Um, so yeah, it's been the first one. Well, it's it's the obvious place to end a taste like this. Oh yeah, um, yeah. But yeah, it is. It was still an absolute treat. It's like like us back in the day. Doing the doing the tasting, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I okay. trained Lewis trained me to do tastings. Yeah. Most mistake ever. <laughs> um, but no, no, that was good. Um, yeah, to be able to do tastings. Remember that. Oh, well. it's just, I cannot wait to get back to doing. Yes, yeah. I'm, I'm sure everyone enjoys doing these virtual tastings uh, back home, even if it's just kind of in, in the background and you're sitting enjoying it. Even if you're not listening to us, even been able to try the whiskies in general. Um, 
yeah, as much as you enjoy them and as much as it's good to be able to do something, it's it will be good to get back to um to get back to some level of I don't want to say normality, I've said that too much. Yeah. Um but to be able to do tastings and stuff and have people visit Campbelltown. Anyone further afield in the UK probably won't be visiting Campbelltown. No, at it's the moment. Just, again it logistics financially, that's just all these factors come into play, but mm. these are quite good for that. They're, they're very good for that actually. So Yeah. Um yeah, being able to send them out from here is certainly um certainly a great thing. And um, not, the usual not miss your delivery because it's in a wee jiffy bag, you know. <laughs> so it just goes through the Oh yeah, oh, yeah. yeah, so it's, it's quite good. Yeah, everything, <laughs> everything's packed appropriately. There was a little bit of a struggle getting all eight rounds. Oh, yeah, I can imagine, yeah. So, but the thing is, they've all been treated well in eight, eight rounds, haven't they? So, mm-hmm. uh, very yeah. well. Um, and yeah, it's been a great lineup as well. Um, so, um, anyone saying anything? The Bomo is superb. Lovely balance of fruit and peat. Andy Rogan. Good to see you attending, Andy. It's been oh. a long time. One name I didn't want to hear tonight. <laughs> um, why not? Oh, no, nothing. No, no, well, we'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll love gonna, Andy. This is going to drop you, isn't it? A lot of approval for the Adam Dale as well. Ah, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, definitely. I think that's the one I drank the most out of as well, the Adam Dale, so it just shows you. Yeah. As soon as, um, the can- as soon as the camera goes off. Oh, that is. <laughs> <laughs> um, I noticed that you've kept some for maybe a little, is it? Just trying to be sensible. <laughs> Just trying to be First sensible, time in many right? years. <laughs> you know me. You know me. Um, but yeah, well, that kind of that is um, all of the drums. And again, if you get any questions, can I get them in um, before we shoot off? Yeah. Um, I'm just trying to think if there's anything else. Well, the thing is, is I understand the frustrations of maybe people haven't got the chance to maybe buy these after this as well, but it's it's more of a showcase and a chance to try yeah, these as well. Um, it's not just uh, like try it before you buy it sort of thing. I mean, it, there's elements of that, but it's mm. there's different elements at play there. Um, yeah, yeah, that's good. It's good to try all this stuff, but again, some of the some of the bottles might be um, might be sold out by the time we try them. Whenever if we ever do. Well, hopefully, you, you always say hopefully we don't have to do a lot of these tastings again. Chances, <laughs> chances are we are going to have to. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. More of more of them. Um, and plus, it's not such a bad thing. I've enjoyed doing that tasting, mate. Um, but yeah, I've been able to been able to try them all. They're not there. Um, and again, if 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 you never put your name forward for one of these bottles or you missed out on one, but there's always the next one. There's always going to be more of this stuff coming out. Famous last words, something happens, and that's the last ever <laughs> moment we see from Um But there will be there will be more of this stuff, and if you miss out, there's going to be next thing. See, if it's not the same thing, there's going to be something straight after that's going to be just as good, uh, just as interesting. And um, what we've, what we've kind of tasted tonight is um, is the way is the way Cannonhead's kind of moving forward at the mm-hmm. moment. Yeah, um, it kind of it was. It was, it was a kind of got to a point where there was a lot of similarities. Like yeah, there was a little bit of repetition. Uh, uh, no, I would well. see in the, on the shop shelves anyway. Yeah. Um, um, so one of the things that was discussed is how to try and move away from that a little bit and have a, a better variety, a better selection, yeah. and more of yeah, more interesting well, things. Really. Again, the, like the things that you maybe not seen in a while, the, the rare Paul John that you put in, obviously the new distillery of Annandale. The Bowmore is not actually the island you would usually see or whatever. It's, um, you have a, a few releases have been having, be it peated or unpeated, but that's good variation as well. And the different cast types we've had to play tonight has been fantastic. Uh, obviously, I joy to try that Craigellic as well. That was very good. Uh, yeah. Uh, so. Yeah, I think that's my favourite. If anyone else has got any favourites, yeah, there, is there any favourites actually? Yeah, yeah. What are the favourites? Um, Paul John, Craig Elke, and Milton Duff are all getting a lot of uh, a lot of praise. The Iron Dale as well, like I said, Paul Moore, unsurprisingly, uh, unsurprisingly. Well, yeah, no, you expect that one. Yeah, you do expect um, that. It's, you know, it's like, that's maybe why it's not the favourite. Ah, uh, you know, you, 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 uh, yeah, 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 I, I get that. Um, the thing is, it's like sometimes even if you try these blinds, like say that. The Invergordon for me, that was that was sublime. That was really, really good. Well balanced. You don't expect that as well. Uh, for such a young grain, you know, the, yeah, you know sometimes can expert. be quite harsh and yeah. such. Um, yes, very good. So yeah, I think um, I think we can both say 
Thank you very much for everyone who joined us tonight. Uh, I know it's Saturday night. It's a bit of a um, not an awkward time for a taste at five o'clock. No, no, it's it um, might set you up for the night, or yeah. it might send you to bed <laughs> for the eight drums. But um, yeah, so thank thanks everyone um, who, who joined us tonight. And if there's anything anything from this release uh, that's still available that you're interested in, don't hesitate to get in touch with um, either ourselves in Campbellton here or with Craig and the guys in Edinburgh. Craig, I'm Craig number one, by the way, okay. Yeah. <laughs> There's two Craigs in Edinburgh, okay, so <laughs> Craig number one, okay. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, um, and that will be, yeah, you'll speak to either one of us or one of the teams here. Um, and, again, any future releases, if you're not a member of the club already, join the club. Um, and, yeah, visit Cadenheads online. We hope we can see you again at another tasting soon. Yep. So, yeah, thank you very much, Craig. Thanks very much, Lewis. It was a pleasure to see you, as always. <laughs> <laughs> Absolute <Yeah>. pleasure. <laughs> Cheers, guys. Cheers, Slanger.